Daniel Foster there from Bell Potter Securities in Perth. We are just a seconds away, of course, from a key print on jobs. The September labour force data about to drop. You will be the first to hear it, of course. I can in advance tell you that we're going to be bringing you a special panel reaction to this print. Uh, the market's tipping about a 20,000 rise in jobs the month of September, the unemployment rate falling to 5%. Uh, the medium forecast on that is similar, but uh, the unemployment rate should be unchanged at 5.1%. Uh, all eyes, of course, just on uh, having to strip out that part-time component of jobs from the month of September because, of course, it was skewed by the federal election. I'm joined for our coverage by Simon Bolton from Aqualis Consulting. He's right next door to me in the studio. And across in Melbourne, Jason Cartwright from the recruitment firm Randstad. Uh, the details and so we'll tell you that we've got an unemployment rate of 5.1 percent that was bang on expectations but the seasonally adjusted figure for september 49,500 against estimates of 20,000 that is a significant overshoot the a dollar jumps on that news and goes above 98 us cents to touch another all-time high money markets uh, really scurrying to no doubt reprice in uh, the expectation that the reserve Bank will have to come out of hibernation at its November meeting. It sat there in the shadows for a fifth straight month just this week, but that figure is uh, undeniably a hot one to say the least. Uh, and you can see also the participation rate uh, baked into that as well. Lots of analysis on these numbers. Just to repeat for you that September employment print 49,500, Reuters estimating a 20,000 rise. And generally speaking where the broader market saw it the 5.1 percent is the unemployment rate that hasn't changed for the months of september we are going to mention though that as i was just giving you that heads up over you've got that important component of full versus part-time workers and uh, the part-time component explained in this set of numbers owing to the federal election let's just also get you some more details the aggregate hours word has actually declined by about a tenth of one percent and uh, baked into this a full-time employment print of 55,800 and uh, as soon as we get the part-time numbers as well they will be brought to into this debate but let's bring in and get some immediate reaction from that the part-time numbers actually just come through and it has fallen 6,300 in September. So just to repeat full-time numbers rising 55,800 in September part-time Falling 6,300. So net net, we did see for the month, as mentioned, that print coming in at 49,500. Simon, uh, you know, you've got to take a, sort of a, a, an intake on that one because clearly catching the market out yet again. Yeah, it's interesting to see that mm. expectations are being um, shot down in flames in some way, Carson. Mm. Um, but I think it doesn't detract away from it's still good news out there. Employment figures are still going the right way. Unemployment rates are looking like they may even get down to 5%. Mm. Um, and the job creation is still running hot. Mm. I mean, last month, remember, we're coming off a base of 53,000 jobs that were created in August. Mm. Um, so this is a significant rise. And we expected this month to be slightly less than that. Let's bring in Jason Cartwright from recruitment firm Randstad. Warm welcome into this discussion. Now, if you just break it down and put for viewers into context why we will have seen, particularly of this month of all months, that part-time read falling away, do you understand that? Hi, Carson. Uh, we would expect the part-time number to decline slightly from August through to September, mainly off the back of the massive rise in full-time permanent positions. Mm -hmm. So um, very, very strong job, uh, job creation numbers there. I think, the, you know, um, as we've stated, that's exceeded all expectations. Most commentators were forecasting around the 20,000 new, uh, new positions created mm -hmm. to come in at 49,500. Very, very strong job mar market there. Um, I think, you know, quarter four, we're heading back into a jobs boom, I would say. Well, and then I guess you've got to have this idea of, well, the war for talent. I mean, we're going to be wanting to see, I would imagine, of, of great importance, how the state-by-state -state figures break down because you got that strength yeah. last month, did you not, an ACT? Uh, and that was, if, if anything, you wanted to see a moderation of that figure and perhaps the, uh, it flowing more evenly and, and having it evenly distributed.
the states. New South Wales was about 5%. And whether that mining uh, boom in WA is manipulating these numbers as well as projects are ramped up in anticipation of that continuing demand. Let's just, if we can get some of that detail uh, through these numbers, uh, just uh, as uh, you know, they all break at once. Just uh, give me your response, though, to what we need to see when it comes to a moderation from state to state. Um, I think we would still be expecting broader growth across all the states. WA has obviously been uh, sort of leading that pack, I think. The mm. resources boom, as you say, has been creating a significant portion of these growth. But it's not just manipulating the figures, Carson. These are the figures. Mm. Uh, you know, jobs, new jobs are there, and that will bring that unemployment rate continuing to go down. It yeah. brings with it, though, some other challenges. Interesting that they haven't revised uh, downwards the August print. So unemployment now... Uh, seasonally adjusted is 5.1 percent. That remains steady. Mm. Uh, is that significant, given that in previous months there have been revisions? Um, I think it takes time for that to flow through. Jobs mm. being created then take time to take people on board. Mm. So that isn't unexpected that that um, rate remains the same. Mm. I think we'd be expecting that to continue falling, mm -hmm. um, perhaps more slowly than it has before. But certainly, it's good news. It is good news. But, as you were saying, the competition for people yeah. is getting higher. That puts and, wage pressure on things. And, and that, that's, Jason Carrai, that's borne out by this participation rate for September, which has risen uh, from a downly yeah. revised figure for August, uh, coming in at 63.4, now coming at 65.6. So, on the one yeah. hand, you've got confidence levels clearly uh, being cemented, but are those expectations being met uh, through what's on offer? Yeah, look, I would say that that data really confirms what we're seeing in the job market, which overwhelmingly confirms the confidence of Australia's business community, but more importantly, the confidence of Australia's employers. So mm. rise in participation rate, that really means that Australian workers are getting uh, to work the hours they want. Um, and also, I think the jump in full-time permanent jobs, again, reflects the ongoing confidence of Australian employers. You know, they're happy to take the risk of hiring a full-time permanent employee rather than a part-time or casual employee. So, so, look, I would say that data is consistent with what we're seeing across all states in Australia, which is a consistent rise in um, employer hiring expectations. What do you make of the aggregate hours falling, though? That's, uh, that, is that a concern? I mean, is that an early kind of semi-red flag to this data? What does it tell us? Uh, Simon, yeah. Again, it's an interesting conflict of numbers. Uh, I think that the aggregate hours is still something that will catch up as these new positions that have been created mm. sort of come online. And I think also that aggregate hours is highly influenced by the number of part-time and the number of temporary workers out so there. So you can't extrapolate and say, actually, that's a priority advance, that we are working smarter for fewer hours? You can't over-read uh, that information? It, it could lead. As you say, it might be a bit of something to make it that specific. Um, mm. But, you know, we have seen as the job market does pick up again, there are efficiencies, there are um, better ways of doing things that organisations have had to come to as when times were tough. Mm -hmm. So there is more efficiency, certainly. You know, uh, this idea, and it's sort of on a broader footing, that the Reserve Bank was coming out with uh, just in recent weeks to you, Jason Cartwright, of mm. the uh, overheated uh, mining sector, but the inevitable washout through the rest of the economy. Mm. Uh, how is yeah. that sort of pulling talent away from some of those states that can least afford it and in turn creating those uh, wage pressures through uh, the, the enticement of going across to those states where anecdotally trained drivers are on six-figure salaries, very healthy ones. Yeah, yeah, we've all heard the stories of truck drivers on 100 grand a year in Caratha. Um, look, I don't. I think the the actual reality and the statistics around that are probably you know not as true as as what a lot of the rhetoric is saying. You know, we're not seeing an exodus of job seekers out of the eastern states mm. into the mining states, and and certainly not uh, not an exodus from the east over to the west. Mm. Um, it's more of a trickle than a flow, I would say. Um, and I think largely in the west that they are able to meet their local demand with the local job market and also importing some talent. Um, uh, from overseas. The, the second part of your question relates to salaries and salary rises. Um, I think overall uh, across Australia we're actually seeing reasonably responsible wage restraint from um, both job seekers and, and employers. However, in a, in a recent Randstad survey, 52% of Australian job seekers are telling us that they have received or will receive a 4 to 5% increase in the next 12 months. And additionally, 21% of